All right, let's see what kind of levels, uh, UVB levels Antilles is working with. Yep, that's what happens. But we go down here, and so at his basking branch, right around, eh, it's supposed to be three. So that's that's right around where it should be. What do you think, Antilles? You approve of those numbers? <laughs> hey, dude. Good morning, Chameleon Wranglers. It is a nice, bright day here in Southern California. But I wonder just how much UVB is actually in that sunlight. Whew, not much. <laughs> and yep, that uh, this is what happens when uh, you have winter in the northern hemisphere. Not a whole lot of UVB. So what is this UVB? Today I want to talk about the solar meter and being able to measure UVB in the captive environment. We were talking uh, yesterday with uh, Stinky, <laughs> who was looking to get a solar meter. And we we're talking about the importance of giving the right solar meter. In this case, what we're looking for is the Solar Meter 6.5. Solar Meter is a company, and 6.5 is a certain model that measures the certain uh, uh, wavelengths of light that allow the body to convert uh, the UVB into uh, vitamin D3. And so this, this meter here measures that. Now, one thing to watch out for is there is a solar meter 6.2, which is very common. The difference between these two is that the 6.2 measures in microwatts per centimeter squared, whereas the 6.5 measures in units of UV index. Now, both of those will work, but the thing is that the UV index is the scale that we all use. And so when you look at the care guides, you're going to see a uh, UV index of three. Now, of course, you're saying, well, there should be a, uh, a direct comparison. I'll just do the formula and a conversion. And unfortunately, we don't have that conversion because the 6.2 and the 6.5, as it was explained to me, measure different areas of the spectrum. And so there isn't able to be just a conversion. Thus, uh, get the 6.5. Just make sure you get the 6.5. Now, I acknowledge that the 6.5 is expensive. We're talking 200 some dollars, uh, although some people have found it for cheaper. But unfortunately, there isn't an off-brand or a cheaper alternative. At this point, it just doesn't exist. Uh, I'd love it if one would exist at some point. But uh, right now, it's shelling out uh, the 200 some dollars for a solar meter 6.5. Now, do you, the question is, do you have to? A lot of people don't, but I will say that the UV meter is one of the most important pieces of equipment that a chameleon keeper has because UVB is critical to your chameleon's health. And the thing is, we can't see UVB. Yes, the uh, UVB bulbs give off visible light, but that doesn't, the, the, the UVB can stop coming out of that light and there still be visible light. Those are different spectrums of light. And so uh, the only way you're gonna know that your UVB bulb has gone bad or is weak is with a solar meter. Uh, you may have remembered one of the previous vlogs where I was just gonna show you me using the solar meter and there on camera, I found out that my light, something was wrong. I wasn't getting the levels I was supposed to be getting and so totally unexpected. And, and I keep track of when I replace my bulbs. I, I'm very good at replacing my bulbs every year, uh, or, or at least testing them on a regular basis to make sure that they're okay. Uh, I don't like throwing out bulbs that still give me good readings, but uh, that was a surprise. And you saw it on camera. So uh, actually checking once a month is is a very good schedule and it helps you keep your chameleon healthy. Now, the next question is gonna be, what UV index level should we be using? And you see a lot, especially in the Chameleon Academy, we talk about UV index of three. 
And this is because we've in the community have tested that a gravid female panther and veiled chameleons would lay fully calcified clutches of eggs when exposed to UV index of three and given no dietary D3. And so that tells us that they converted enough of the UVB to D3. They were able to absorb the, enough of the calcium to fully calcify eggs, which is the most intense use of calcium that any of our chameleons will go through in their entire lives is calcifying eggs. So that was the standard that we used to test what UV index uh, we should use. Now, please understand, that's just a data point. We know that UV index of three works. We don't know that that is the optimal UV index. We don't know that you have to keep it on for 12 hours. These are all things that we still need to experiment. And I invite you all to do experiments, further experiments to figure out more about UVB. Us determining that UV index of three was a great uh, level for panthers, veiled carpet chameleons was a milestone. It was an incredible achievement. But uh, please continue the experimentation, continue discovering uh, better and better uh, implementations for UVB. Uh, that, that's what this community is all about. So uh, please continue working on that. All right. I'm going to go in and we're going to go see if we can find that Europlatus fantasticus. That's the, uh, the uh, satanic leaf-tailed gecko that I tried in the last vlog. And he was uh, stuck in a place that I can't, couldn't get him out without stressing his tail. Didn't want him to drop his tail. So we're going to go back in. We're going to see if we can find him and I can show you him out and not stuck in a log. So let's see if this works. There we go. I got him out. I turned on the light. This is surprising him. He thought it was nighttime, but I turned on the light so we could see him. That is a Europlatus fantasticus. This is a male. And often it's the males that have that, uh, those tails with the chunks uh, taken out of them. Uh, but sometimes females can have that as well. Another secondary characteristic, that teardrop under the eye is often with males, but then again, some females have that as well. So, uh, you know, you, you got to know some tricks on these guys. Let's see if I can pick him up. Oh. He does not. Oh, shoot. He's back in his. <laughs> he crawled back in his log. All right, folks. I am not going in after him because he will lose a tail if I get too shenanigan y with him. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and turn this uh, light back off. Um, I don't know if any of you are surprised by how much he moved, how quickly he moved. Well, that's because uh, I just turned on the lights. It was nighttime, so he is awake. And it may surprise people who see Fantasticus sleeping during the day to know that when it's nighttime, they are incredibly active. They are all over the place. So uh, that's what we saw. Okay, well, at least we saw him. Yay, victory! Well, folks, the end of the day has kind of snuck up on me, and it's not too long until this vlog releases uh, tomorrow at 5 a.m. in the morning, and I am there with you for the uh, first showing. And I tell you, it's a nice experience having this group of people hang out and be there early in the morning, ready to welcome in the day together. So that's been a very cool experience that I look forward to. Now, I'm sorry to report that uh, Spearmint did not request silkworms today. And for those wondering what I'm talking about, I'm trying to train my chameleon to perch on a certain branch whenever he wants silkworms. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to work with this species of chameleon, uh, the shamrock chameleon, uh, but you know, we'll go ahead and try. It 
there, there were a couple of points where I thought maybe I was making a making progress and but uh, nope not today no request today so maybe tomorrow and just to be clear uh, if anybody hears me talking about trying to establish this relationship and train tame uh, experiment who's a chameleon uh, yes that does go against what i usually say about leave your chameleons alone uh, but it's okay to try to establish some sort of interaction if the chameleon, number one, has all the security they need, as in they have a large enough cage that is heavily planted so they know that they could get away from you if they wanted to. And I never restrict the mobility of the chameleon. Uh, and I take a hint. If he's getting annoyed or scared, I back off. So that's a healthy way of establishing a relationship. Um, I don't want to ever say that you shouldn't establish a relationship. Uh, often I want to say don't expect too much out of the relationship because if you get one that just won't tame down and won't accept you, that's, that's not their fault. Uh, we are the ones who have chosen to bring them into our home. So we're the ones who have to adjust to what they are. Now, in the coming days, I'm going to be working on finishing up this enclosure behind me so I can put the Fantasticus, the Carpet Chameleon, and the Azurius Dart Frog in there. And so we can have a real fun time with that being a little community and we can check up on it on a regular basis. Now, as a summary for today, the important thing is we were talking about the Solar Meter 6.5, and that is how we measure UVB. It's a very important piece of equipment. If you're serious about chameleon keeping, it's one of those things that you should buy. Uh, if you don't have one, you can use the guides in uh, the chameleonacademy.com. The care guides will have a distance that you can be from certain uh, UVB light uh, intensities like 6%, 12%. And so you can find a distance from the light to the back of the chameleon through the uh, filter of a screen cage. And you can use that and just replace the bulbs every six to 12 months. And that's a way that you can do it without buying a solar meter. Although in the long term, people have noted that uh, they spend more money on UVB bulbs and they would actually have saved more than they spent for the solar meter if they had the solar meter because the solar meter lets you know when the bulb is bad and they don't all go bad at 12 months. So there are savings there. If you need a justification, that's it. All right, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and get to bed so I can wake up bright-eyed, bushy-tailed and meet you all at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. So please take care of yourself, be excellent to each other, and I'll see you next time.